Hi everyone, Reflected here. Welcome to my first ever helicopter tutorial. Now, I've always been a huge fan of Hueys, read dozens of memoirs of pilots who flew them over Vietnam. However, I'm not an expert of helos at all. My knowledge is not as deep as about warbirds. I try my best to explain, but uh, take it with a grain of salt. And if you fly helicopters in real life, please leave a comment I would love to stand corrected, okay? Still, I felt I must make this tutorial because you'll be desperately needing it when flying my upcoming QE campaign, Paradise Lost. In this campaign, you'll start by flying slicks, so transporting supplies or troops. Then in the second half, you'll be assigned to B Company, flying gunships, and those are not as easy to fly as you would think. In some of the memoirs I've read, it was mentioned that newer, more powerful Hueys usually flew slick missions, while older models with weaker engines were assigned to gunship units. It's because in a slick, you often needed to hover into and out of tight LZs, straight up or down, with supplies or an entire LERP team on board, while gunships never really had to land in tight spots. Let me explain. In any aircraft, fixed wing or rotary. You need lift if you want to go up, right? There are two main variables that can increase lift in flight. Angle of attack and speed. You can simply increase the AOA in a fixed wing plane by pulling back on the stick and it will start climbing. However, you also get more lift if you increase speed. Lift actually increases with the square of the speed, so it matters a lot more than you would think. In a helo that's hovering, you can't increase lift by pulling back on the cyclic. It will just start moving backwards. However, if you raise the collective, it will increase the angle of attack of the blades, which will eventually start to bite and the chopper will start climbing. In theory, that is. In practice, there is a limit to how much pitch you can pull. The main limiting factors are the torque and the exhaust gas temperature or EGT. The more you raise the collective, the more those needles go up and there is a red line you can almost never cross. So when taking off in an overloaded Huey, always keep an eye on the EGT gauge. If it goes past the red line, that means the engine has to be checked for cracks because for some time it, it was running too hot. If your life is in danger, of course you can forget about it. You need to get out of there and chances are that a few seconds of being over the red line won't destroy the engine right away. However, when it's not a matter of life and death and you redline the ship, you'll have your ass in a slingshot. And the engine can eventually fail later in the mission. On the other hand, the more forward speed you gather, the more your main rotor will start acting like a big round wing, producing lift, needing less collective. It's called translational lift. You just need to reach that magic number, which is somewhere between 20 to 40 knots indicated in the DCS Huey, in my experience, depending on the load. So while in a slick you need to be able to just pull pitch and hover out of a tight LZ, because you don't have any room to move, you can't do the same in an older gunship. But you have the luxury of forward speed. In real life, they just had enough power to hover at a few feet from the ground or just to get light on the skids before the needle reached the red line. This weaker engine will be simulated in my campaign too. So how do you take off in a gunship then? Well you need to use the second variable, speed. Let me show you how. So here we are in an overloaded older model Huey gunship and we would like to take off. So if I raise the collective the exhaust gas temperature goes up and the thing is I'm Right at the red line, the Huey is light on the skids, but I'm still at zero feet. So that's not going to work. 
Instead, I'm going to use something called the ground effect. So the air uh, that is moving down through uh, the main rotor cannot get out of the way because it hits the ground and it kind of bounces back and it forms an invisible cushion underneath uh, the main rotor. This is called the ground effect and it keeps you up. However, it's super easy to slide off this cushion. So when you hover in an overloaded Huey, you have to be very, very gentle on the cyclic. The movements should be almost imperceptible, like tiny, tiny movements. Otherwise, you slide off and, and the Huey will lose that few feet of altitude that, that you gathered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to taxi out forward. I'm not going to taxi all the way to the runway, just here on the taxiway. The wind is blowing from that direction. I'm going to turn into the wind. There's about 8 to 10 knots today. So uh, that's 10 knots of flying speed already. We're 10 knots closer to translational lift, which is good. So always, always do this into the wind. And I'm going to very slightly move the cyclic forward to get some forward speed, trade some altitude for forward speed. And as I gather speed, I'm going to get more lift. So I will have the opportunity to push the cyclic even further forward to convert even more of that lift into forward speed and so on and so forth. And eventually we'll hit translational lift and just fly. This is not going to be very smooth because I'm not an exceptionally good kilo pilot. I'm sure you guys can do it much better, but I'm going to give it a go to demonstrate. So the idea here is to get to one or two feet of altitude without redlining the ship and while keeping it in one position. So a nice hover there. And with ever so slight movements of the cyclic, I'm taxiing forward. The skids are sometimes touching the ground. That's all I got. Okay. Now let's turn, paddle turn into the wind. I've got one foot of altitude. Two, three, oh, back to two, okay. So now I'm gonna move the cyclic forward and trade this little bit of altitude for forward speed. Okay, let's give it a go. And I'll try not to let it touch the ground, but not to let it climb either. I'm right at the red line. Let's keep it down. You need to fly a lot smoother than me to make it work. We're getting 20 knots already. I'm not gonna let it climb just yet. Pushing the cyclic even further forward. 40 knots, 60 knots, we're flying. We hit translational lift and we can do whatever we want. We can climb and we're still way below the red line. Okay, that was not pretty, but I hope you got the idea and you'll have the chance to practice it uh, while playing Paradise Lost, my upcoming QE campaign. All right, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more info and updates on the campaign. See you guys.